I love this powerhouse theme. I love the fact that when we were practicing it as staff, I mean, working really hard, um, it just seemed to rock it up. And then when it comes to actually doing it, it's a nightmare. Anyway, good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you. If I haven't met you before, my name is Ben. I think I've met some of you. If I have, you're welcome. And um, we're carrying on our series on powerhouse words, works and wonders and we're going to be looking at the power of words what does it mean for us to build one another up what does it mean for us to build one another up to encourage one another so last week Jim spoke about always being ready to share our story looking at evangelism our words there but what does it mean for us to encourage each other as well so I'd just like to have the reading pop up on the screen please And then it says this, it says, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. And then he says, It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Well, just keep that up. The situation in this reading is Moses, who you've heard of before, if you've ever seen the prince of Egypt, he led the people of God out of slavery, out of Egypt. And he's traveling through the desert and he's leading all these people. And then age catches up with him. Age catches up with him and it comes to a point where he hands over the leadership to somebody else. And this person is Joshua. Joshua is the one who is going to fulfill the promise that God has made to the people of God. And Joshua is the one to go and do it. What I love about this verse is we have all that first bit where he speaks about leading the people into the land. But it's this second verse that I think we're reflecting on today. This is the verse that I think is still true for each and every one of us. And so where you're seated, adults first, I want you to read this out together. And we're going to say it over the children. Let's say it together. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Children, teenagers, you're now going to speak this over all the adults in the room. Let's go. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. What's amazing with this passage is Moses wasn't just doing a lovely little farewell card to Joshua to make him feel good and nice and fuzzy about himself. What he was doing is he was calling out the courage that was already inside Joshua to do great things for God because God is with him. This passage, I think, can be read to be seen as an encouragement for the future church, for younger people to be encouraged to hear God. But just now, as you heard, we can still encourage each other, regardless of our age. You see, sometimes it can be quite easy to just crack on on our own. Now, anyone who's done those, um, any of those tests, so, you know, it tells you who you are in a nice little box, which we all love being told, don't we? I love being told I'm an INTP. Um, I, I think I'm bigger than that. But the fact is, I love evangelism. I love talking to people about Jesus. And like a wind-up torch, I think I can really kick out a bit of light. And I get really excited. And when people say, tell me more about Jesus, I go for it. I go for it. And then I get tired. And then it goes flat. And then sometimes I think, I don't know if I can really be bothered this time round. You know what? I've actually charged myself up enough to have my own little light. I've done my prayers, I've read my scripture, I've listened to a good podcast. 
but I've kind of kept it to myself. And suddenly, if you're trying to encourage yourself, I just think it doesn't work. And I think it's a funny, slippery path that we can fall down. That's why we gather together to worship, to encourage, to hear words of Scripture spoken to us from God to you, to each and every one of us. I believe each and every one of us has that courage inside us that we can call out from one another. We're talking about powerhouse. I've been dying to do this. So we've got this bad boy. Great. But when you gather, when we gather and we pray, come Holy Spirit, when we speak words of encouragement over others, and actually when we receive encouragement, because sometimes I don't think we're very good at receiving it, or we might not get it. We go from little wind-up torch to this bad boy. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit coursing through this. I'm going to try not to blind anyone. Sorry, kids. This is what we go for. This is what it looks like to build each other up, to encourage one another, to have the power of the Holy Spirit coursing through us in words and actions and deeds. I mean, it's bright in here, but I can still see it. Whoa. This is what we do when we come together, when we encourage. What I love is that in the passage of Hebrews, we find as well, It says in Hebrews 10.24, let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. How do we provoke people? (sighs) To love and do good deeds. It's what we're meant to do. I'm going to put this away now. Yeah, all right. We might be able to make power on our own. We're a powerhouse and we're together and when the Holy Spirit is flowing through us. Sometimes we will just get tired. Sometimes we will just think enough is enough. But that is where we pick each other up. That is where we work together, build one another up. There's a quote that Jim shared, and it's from Martin Luther. And he says this, he says, The teacher transmits knowledge. The teacher just kind of tells you what you need to learn, you know, memorize it. Sorry, students who are doing all your exams. But the encourager stimulates. The encourager is the one who helps something rise within you. And I would say that is the courage. That is building one another up. What would it look like for us as a church to not be seen as these little solo opportunities of going around, going crazy, and then you hit Wednesday, oh, to be in a powerhouse. What would it look like for us to be people known for speaking words of encouragement over each other? And it's not just encouragement like, I love your hair, Ben. Things like that. <laughs> wow. <sighs> It's encouraging people when you hear that they've shared a bit of their story at work, at school. When you hear that somebody at a primary school talks about like the 415 going on at St. Faith's. These opportunities that might seem like, oh, that's lovely. But actually we need to encourage them, draw out what God wants to do through them. I really do feel quite passionately about the fact that I think maybe it is just me, but I don't think we're very good at receiving encouragement either. I felt we're given these building blocks like Lego, like Duplo, that we stack up, but we don't use them. And that's why I want to offer some time this morning for us to simply pray. We're going to be saying, as we always do, come Holy Spirit but to pray for that gift of encouragement. For some of you, you might find it hard to encourage others. 
come forward for prayer. For some of you, you might struggle to hear the encouragement. Come forward for prayer. Because it's all for the sake of the kingdom. It's all to make Jesus known. That's why Joshua's commissioned was spoken over by Moses. That's why we are spoken over now by the same loving God who sends us to be a powerhouse, to encourage, to bring change. So can I invite you where you stand? Just stand up. We're just going to see what is it that God wants to say to you. What is it he wants to speak over you personally? To plug you in, to power you up, so you can be an encouragement to others.